Welcome to the Magic on the Inside podcast by the Sisters Enchanted, where we chat magic, hot topics, personal development, and good old-fashioned life. Brew up something delicious and sit with us for a spell. Hey, I'm Sarah of the Sisters Enchanted, where it's our mission to make magic mainstream, and I'm bringing you episode one of our tarot series Here on our podcast, I'll be chatting with Anna over 12 episodes all about the tarot. The first one up is about the fool, the magician, and the high priestess. Be sure to listen in and enjoy. Hey, Anna. Hi, Sarah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, All right. So we're kicking off a brand new series of our podcast, a new season, I guess you'd call it. And last season, we talked to Everyday Witches Making Everyday Magic and featured tons of community members. This time, we are talking tarot. All things tarot. Yay! Your body's too tarot-licious for me. (laughs) Babe, not Beyonce. (laughs) I was like, I'm kind of catching what you're throwing at me. Not at all Beyonce. A little (laughs) alarmed. A little alarmed. So I think what we are going to do in this tarot series is break down the tarot over 12 episodes. I'm making a whole tarot Beyonce song in my head. Because your body's too tarot. (laughs) I'm like, I don't think you're ready for this tarot. I don't think you're ready for this tarot. (laughs) Oh my gosh, somebody make a snap. Okay, well, so we're going to start at the beginning. At the beginning. Where else would one start? At the beginning. the beginning, in the beginning, there were three cards. In the beginning, there were foolish men, <laughs> not sure of where the road would take them, who they would bump into, what lessons they would meet, how they would grow. They learned that all the tools were within them, if only they listened to their higher selves. And dug deep into the deep pools of intuition. The end. Just kidding. <laughs> All right. Well, that that was really informative. Yeah. You're welcome. So we're talking the first three cards of the major arcana today. If you don't know anything about tarot and you're just tuning into this podcast, I would definitely recommend hitting up our YouTube channel. We have some videos and also our tarot throwdown class, which is uh, super awesome and will like tell you everything you need to know in seven days. So now that I've plugged that sweetness. Let's get started. We're going to talk today about the Fool, the Magician, and the High Priestess. So these are the first three cards of the Major Arcana. Um, Okay, so the Fool. The Fool, the Magician, and the High Priestess, they really represent, like, you, right? Us, as an individual person. Your personhood and your story through the tarot. Um... So the fool, do you want to start by with just like ch- chat a little about the pool? The pool? The pool? The pool boy. The pool is so nice. And the pool boy. <laughs> don't even get thing. me started. No. Um, well, first and foremost, I would say that would, starting about the majors is that when you talk about tarot, major arcanas are major stories, major secrets, major influences. And then the rest of the cards are your minors, which are other things so majors are like the big energy around you and the minors are what you can do in that energy huzzah huzzah okay so first and foremost we have the fool and the fool is card number zero of our 78 cards of tarot and zero being unnumbered unlimited untapped potential infinite um and the fool which um you know typically depicts on a traditional deck a man or woman, a person's on the precipice of a cliff about to jump off with their little spirit animal usually nipping at their heels heels saying, wait, 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 there's danger afoot, don't jump. (laughs) But the fool is like, hey man, you only live once, this is an opportunity, it's time to jump. And he only ever has a little bit of a parcel with him, everything he needs is on his back and he's ready to go and start a new adventure. So with this card, there's a little bit of naivety, a little bit of unsureness, total unpreparedness, but total trust and faith in the process. I was going to say, faith. Faith. Ultimately, faith. Faith. That one foot in front of the other. Put one foot in In front front of of the other. other. It's going to take you where you need to go. you'll be walking across the floor. (laughs) So 
So the fool's the beginning of our tarot journey. Journey. The journey through the major arcana. The fool's journey. The fool's journey. It's the beginning of the story. And the fool, for us, is our... It can be new beginnings. It can be the call to sort of throw caution to the wind. The um, call to, that it's time to start something over. Yeah. Like you have... You know, the, the majors go zero to 22. Mm-hmm. Brain freeze. Um, and... You know, once you get to that, you have no other chance, other choice but to start again. So this is a call to action that you've already done what you could do in that last cycle. And a life cycle could be anywhere between a week or six months or years, you know. And it's just, it's a a nod that it's time to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, for sure. So with the Fool, we kind of see ourselves untapped potential. And we don't know anything else at that moment. If you just it can look, be scary. Yeah, if you just look at that fool card, there's no, you know, we don't have the story around it. Um, and we don't know, like, we're just like, oh, no, certain doom is upon us because that fool is going to walk off the cliff. And some other decks, though, <laughs> like, I'm looking at a deck here in my hand, and it's just a woman walking down a sidewalk, and and it's, it's a far less scary feeling. But there's still that idea of just one foot in front of the other yeah. and sort of see what comes up for you. So when we follow through our fool's journey. And all the seasons are changing. So she yeah. has all these opportunities. And again, just the bag on her side. She yeah. has what she needs. She's got her headphones in. She's just like, I'm just moseying. Up. I'm just a girl. <laughs> this is going to be like the soundtrack of our lives. This is ridiculous. Um, okay, <laughs> so the fool, it's you. It's you, untapped potential. Your story's not written yet. Uh, and you have much to learn, young Padawan. <laughs> oh my gosh. Much to learn, you do. Um, okay, so after the you Fool... You did good there. No, no. So after the Fool, we come to our next card. So this is card number one of the Major Arcana, and that's the Magician. So with the Fool, we see this naive sort of person, this like childlike kind of spirit where you're just like, this seems amazing, I'm going to walk off this cliff and see what's on the other side. Um, and then we start to see that, oh crap, like life is on the other side. Yeah. I like to talk about the majors as the fool going through aspects of their life. So I like to think that the fool has jumped off the cliff and the first thing that the fool does is run into the magician. So the fool is not quite the magician yet because the magician, if you uh, look at a magician card in tarot, the magician has um, usually an item from each suit of the miner. So he's got a pentacle, a cup, a sword, and a wand, which means that he is the master of all elements, earth, air, fire, water, and that the fool runs into him and the magician shows the fool the potential he has if he continues on the path and learns the lessons that you are infinitely capable of whatever you set your mind to and that you're the master of your own potential. Mm -hmm. Um, So the magician is there saying like, these are the tools, you can wield them all, you just have to have faith in yourself that you are the master of all things in your life. Yeah, and you have the tools. You have It's a matter of using them and learning to use them, right. um, which is sort of where this day-to-day stuff comes in with the the, the minor Minus, arcana right. later on, which we're going to talk about like way far, a few more episodes from now. But um, you know, like you have all these things, and how are you using them in your daily life? Mm-hmm. So we're the fool. We're we're like just placed here, and the fool can mean the beginning of any new adventure too. Right. So it's literally like like you know, birth into this new. Bam, you're here, now what? But it's like every time you went to a new school growing up, every time you get a new job now, every time you have a new relationship, like you're constantly like every year that you get older, you know, and something changes, you know. And in each of those positions, we have these tools that the magician lays before us, and it's up to us to decide how we're going to wield them and utilize them. So we have them already. and Maybe they're in our backpacks. Yeah, we need to not ignore them. Right. (laughs) So after the Magician, we run into our next card, which is the High Priestess. Yes. So the High Priestess, where the Magician... Very mysterious. Yeah, where the Magician shows us tangible things. It's like, you have this power, you have this power, you have this tool to help ignite this power. Um, Like, the Magician is literally, like, I'm just feeling like... So, like, the Magician is, like, when you go to a magician show... That there's sleight of hand, but everything's there if you really look for it. There's there's a there's tools, there's an action, there's something underlying that caused the reaction, um, caused 
the magic to work. The work had been put in. The high priestess is like essentially your your psychic your intuition. Your intuition. Your so, higher self. so there is no sleight of hand here with the truly realistic <laughs> you know the real spiritual the real magic. spiritual magic. So this is not like pulling rabbits out of a hat because there's a rabbit hidden in a chest, but this is like real magic, the magic that lies deep within you that you just have to tap into and trust that you have, whether or not you can actually hold your tangible tools yet. Yeah. And we see um, kind of the idea of duality and balance often in this High Priestess card. And I think it's that meshing, like what you've brought forth so far. So as you move through the Fool's Journey, you always have everything that came before. And all those experiences are bringing you to the next point. Mm -hmm. So we don't leave behind, even though the High Priestess is our intuition, we're not leaving behind those tangible tools that we just, right. we just discovered and we learned about. That logic comes with us. That external stuff, the things we can actually do today, comes with us into our high priestess experience, into our intuitive experience, where we can then say, okay, this is the opportunity here. This is the stuff that I can do right now. And then it's listening to our higher selves to say, like, all right, this is what needs to happen, um, and this is the tool I'm going to reach for, and my higher, like, I've tapped into my higher self, my highest knowing, to make that tangible decision to make that next move based on what I've carried through. So they're always building on each other. Right. And the magician, like I said, has kind of things laid out before them. And the high priestess challenges you to learn more, to dig deeper. Um, you know, in a reading, the high priestess might say, like, take a second because you don't have all the information that you need to continue moving forward. So sometimes she's even like a halt, like halt, go back. There's more, <sighs> more digging you need to do turn back before you can proceed with all the information that you need so like I guess in a reading sometimes she's saying like if you're like should I take this new job and you pull the high priestess it's like you don't know everything yet sit with yourself find out more information and then make decisions from there so it's a lot about uncovering secrets uncovering more information more depth before being able to move forward it's a call to really dive deep into to, to figure out what you need to do next. Yeah. And I think what's interesting is that these are the first three cards in the Major Arcana. And we just talked about the idea that the cards, the story of the Major Arcana, it builds, right? It's always layered and building and we bring all this stuff forward. But just like anything in life, the farther you get away from that starting point, you start to forget about that. So like when we're all the way farther down the line in a journey, we've learned things, like maybe you've had the same job for 10 years, you've been in the same relationship for 10 years, you've like whatever, we get so far down the line and we forget like our we, power that we had going into yeah, it. Yeah, we disconnect from this. This mm -hmm. these first three cards, they are Well you even think about it you. like as a life cycle, when you're born into this life and you're born as an infant, you and you're a child and you're between, I don't know, zero and four or five, you usually know everything that you want to do. You know what brings you happy. You know what brings you happiness. You know what brings you joy. You know, like, what your, like, calling is, essentially. And you see ghost kittens walking around the house. And you talk <laughs> to grandparents in the mirror. I don't know. Um, but that, that those are things and tools that we're born with that usually we lose. Yeah. And the high priestess kind of is almost a little bit like that, like, don't forget that I'm still here, but very easily hidden and lost mm -hmm. in the collective pool of, like, your consciousness as you get older, thinking that, like, I didn't see that ghost kitty, that was just my imaginary friend because of this, or you forget what brings you joy because you're plummeted into society where they say you have to learn math and you have to learn, you yeah. know, this, that, and this, and you forget your fundamental skills that you were born with. And that happens in every... Every scenario, like everything you do when you first start it, any new journey and you're like really jazzed about it and you're learning all the ins and outs and you're right. spending all the extra time and you're like, I'm going to go the extra mile. As soon as you get, you know, farther removed from that beginning place, that fool's place, you start to forget that you, you had all these tools that you were using to make the best of the experience. So like Dorothy, you had the magic all along yes. right here. And you like forget to check in with yourself and say, wait, does this feel really good? What's going to feel really good right now? And we become complacent. Right. And that's where we start to run into some of these more harsh cards later in the major arcana that we're going to talk about, you know, as the series goes on. Right, where it's time to reevaluate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
and coming back to this place of the beginning of the major arcana, the, the fool's journey, the, the fool, the beginning of the fool's journey, our magician and our high priestess, and seeing that this is all the stuff that you brought These are all our foundations experience. that we have to get back to remembering. And that's why we keep having our cycles. That's why we end and start again, to help remind us along the way. So that one time, eventually, we'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> Someday. Someday. Probably not. On a small scale or a big scale. Like you said, <laughs> this can be like having a new baby, or it could be like just starting a new school, or Picking starting your Mercury exact, retrograde. Right. Dessert at a restaurant. That's always hard. See, we don't ever pick the exact right dessert because we buy all of them. Yeah. I would rather go... <laughs> no options for being honest, wrong. I would rather go out to a nice restaurant... And order like all the desserts with like a glass of wine and a coffee. Yeah. Then go to actual uh, eat a meal out because I am just all about the, like, the treats, which yeah. is kind of a problem. It, yeah, I would much rather go to all the restaurants and order one of each like pasta dish <laughs> and one of each glass of wine on the menu. It's not the case for me. We were trying to decide a Compare restaurant the other day, and I was like. Kevin gave up, like, all these Italian restaurants, and I was like, all they have is pasta there. Like, where do they have the best cake? That's where we need to go. Our local wine bar now has a build-your-own pasta dish. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Many you, different pasta like, choices, sauces, and toppings. Know where to find Anna at the <laughs> wine bar. Uh, we digress. So, ain't no shame in a wine bar. <laughs> so, the fool's journey. So, when we look, when we break down uh, the major arcana like this in these sections, too... I think it helps us to remember the cards, and when we're reading, if you pull, like, the magician, when we are used to looking at them in in groups, it's easier to remember and say, like, oh, I have the magician here, and also... There's potential here. Yeah, like, possibly what, untapped. what comes around that, yeah. Like, what, what do, do I, I have in my arsenal? This? Yeah. And that takes your tarot readings to a whole other level. When you're right. able, like, if you just pull the magician, right, and then you have, like, the three of swords and, like, whatever else you have... Being able to look at that magician and remember where it is in the journey, mm -hmm. like what did you lose that made this come up, and what do you right. need to do next right. to move forward, really right. will. Well, if you think of it too, if you pull like again, like you said, like three cards, and you pull one major, like the magician, and then two minors, the major is like your key word. So even if like there are some hard things going around, and you pull like the magician, you're like, wow, I have some hard things going on, but what do I have right now? with me that's going to get me through this because I have it mm -hmm. just what is it um, and where can I build from that yeah that's good stuff so these <laughs> these early cards if you're constantly pulling one of these cards like the fool or the magician or the high priestess remember that that's very foundational stuff it's kind of the stuff you don't need to look beyond yourself for you know right. it's like it's if you're particularly it's like action intuition action and intuition mm -hmm. if you're if you're pulling cards and you're like should i buy this house like is this person the right person for me and should you pull I... the high priestess and you keep pulling these three cards <laughs> like this is your the answer is here you know if you're trying to externalize the solution but you keep pulling one of these three cards I, I would say that that's a clear indicator to stop trying to externalize your answer. Right. <laughs> like, the answer is you, it's within you. It's right. your, right. you know, there's no outside force that's going to yeah. help you with if that. If you keep wanting to know if this new relationship's right for you and you keep pulling the high priestess, she's telling you, like, you already know, like, homeboy, homegirl, like, you already stop know. Me. Like, if you're pulling your cards every day saying, is this person right for me? And you have to ask your cards every day and you still keep getting the high priestess, it's probably telling you no. And the fact that you're always questioning it, that's probably a no. And she's reminding you, like, are you listening to yourself? Do you hear yourself? Yeah. You she's... know? Or it could or if you pull like a clarifying card or something, it might be just saying, like, take your time. Like, no rush. There's no rush. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eventually the high priestess is gonna be like, Listen, I told you. And then you maybe, didn't listen. Yeah, maybe start throwing some other craziness at you, like some ten of swords. You're like some ten you're not of listening. Swords. You're not listening. Three of swords. Get down. Ten of swords. Cover your head. Call for backup. Tower. Tower. You don't hear me the first time. I shall tower you. <laughs> I shall make you listen to me. <laughs> tower card. Your deck turns all of a sudden into a seventy-eight deck card card deck of towers. Just tower, like tower, 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 tower. Like a weird, like stomping tin soldier. That's all tower. Tower, card. tower, tower. Like stitch down. I like the tower card. I have a yeah. great relationship with that card. Well, that's for another episode. 
Well, I guess that's it. Do you have any last uh, words, any, like, thoughts on the, the fool, the magician, the high priestess that we didn't, we didn't touch upon? I don't know. I, I would say maybe just last but not least, because I kind of drew a line between the fool and the magician, like the fool jumping off the cliff and running into the magician, and the magician's like, these are all the tools that you have. And I will show you how to be like the sorcerer, how to do all the things, and that you too are capable of all these things. And then you leave the magician knowing that you have unlimited tap potential, and you walk into this high priestess who's this shadowy, quiet figure who has all the knowledge in her lap, and you want all the knowledge, and she's going to sit there and tell you, but you have to earn it. So you leave the magician feeling like, full of confidence, like you've got it all, and then you walk into the high priestess and she reminds you that you still have learning to do and that nobody can hand you the key to unlocking your unlimited potential. Yeah. That you need to dive deep, you need to learn your own things and sit with yourself and get to know yourself so that you can actually utilize the tools that the magician has shown you how to use. She is, like, really like a, like a, you know, a, uh, what am I trying to say, like a, a checkpoint, I guess, because with the magician, we have that, like, power stance where he's like, you know, you, everything's connected. John Travolta in yeah. Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I like, <laughs> everything's connected. He's got one hand up, one one finger down, you know, and he's like, you're As connected above, so below. to all, yeah, you're connected to all it is. We have the infinity symbol there, and you feel so, like, you know, with this fool who's like, oh, look, I, I have all the things. This is going to be amazing. And then the high priestess is like, check yeah, yourself before yeah. you wreck yourself. Back up, yo. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that easy. <laughs> and it's it's being done with, you know, we have a divine feminine archetype there. So there is a mothering aspect to there. But she's like the mother that when a kid falls, she doesn't pick them up right away. She's like, get yourself up. Like, you got this. But you've got to figure out how to do it yourself. Yeah. Um, and you have to learn to trust yourself so that you can be trusted with your tools. Um, and that you can trust yourself with your tools. So, yeah, she's definitely a checkpoint. And she has everything. It's like she's literally your intuitive pool, and she knows everything that's set out in front of you. But she's like, yeah, man, not telling you. Figure it out. True that. Yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this episode, uh, episode one of our tarot series of our podcast, Magic on the Inside. Uh, And we'll see you in the next one. Yay. All right. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for hanging with us on this episode of the Magic on the Inside podcast. I'm Sarah of the Sisters Enchanted, where it's our mission to make magic mainstream. If you're interested in learning more about tarot, check out our tarot throwdown class at thesistersenchanted.com forward slash tarot throwdown. Give us a like. Uh, Five stars is great on iTunes or wherever you're listening to this podcast. And be sure to hang up with us on social media and our Facebook group, wherever you are online. And we'll see you in the next episode.